All right, I got a new video today. And sometimes I'll get ideas for videos, like every now and then, just I'll just think, and I'm like, oh, that'd be a great idea for a video. And I do that a lot. And this is one of those videos. There's a lot of people out there that are atheists, meaning they don't believe in anything. When you die, you're just dead, darkness, whatever they think. I've heard a lot of different atheists say a lot of different things uh, about what their personal belief is about the end. I fully believe Jesus Christ is the truth. I think the King James Bible is telling you nothing but the actual truth. And there's, in my mind, there's no way to doubt the proof of God. But people are people, and everybody has the right to their opinion. But here's the thing. The Bible's truth and all the prophecy, the future events in the Bible are going to happen, whether you believe it or not. So you kind of wonder about this. And today I want to talk about what will happen to those out there that will not believe unless they see. Now we know that when Jesus was talking and Jesus had come back, and, he's, and when he rose again, he wrote, went up to heaven. He went to the third heaven. I believe he took his blood to the mercy seat and splashed on the mercy seat in heaven, which is where he is, is right now. But when Jesus resurrected, and he uh, rose again and he went to heaven. He came back for about 40 days. And during that time, he visited with his uh, disciples and things like that. And he was seen, over from, with, seen from over you know, 500 people. And even saw him ascend into heaven when he left. And there was you know, two, uh, two men standing there. I wonder if maybe it was Moses and Elijah, maybe. Saying, why you look up into the sky and everything? And you know, the same Jesus will come back the same way he left on a cloud, apparently. Pretty, pretty amazing. Now, we know how Jesus comes back because I'm going to read to you in the book of Revelation here what happens when Jesus comes back and what it's going to be like. Because there's so many people don't want to believe in God unless they see. And when Jesus had come back, he went up to heaven, he came down and stayed for about 40 days after his crucifixion and resurrection. And this guy, Doubting Thomas, they call him Doubting Thomas because that's his name throughout time now. Because he would not believe that Jesus resurrected from the dead unless he could feel his wounds where the nails were. And Jesus led him. And he, Jesus was, uh, I'm paraphrasing, he says, Blessed are those that have believed but have not seen. Faith is about believing something without seeing it. That's faith. Like over here in the Millennial Kingdom, Jesus will reign physically in person. And there will be no need for faith because we'll see him. We'll be able to say, oh, you don't believe in Jesus? Well, he's right there. So there's no unbelief at that in the time of the Millennial Kingdom. But now we can't see Jesus because this dispensation hasn't ended yet. And the new dispensation will start in tribulation time. So... It comes to the point, those that refuse to believe in Christ until they see him are in trouble. Because if you wait to believe until you see Jesus come back in Armageddon, it's going to be too late. I'm going to show you a few things here. This is Revelation chapter 21. And let's see. Hold on a second. No, we're not going to back that far. This is look at Revelation, excuse me, 19. Verse 11, starting verse 11, it says, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Who's he that sat upon him? Jesus is faithful and true. And it says, and, uh, faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. When judge and make war, at Armageddon. It says in verse 12, his eyes were a flame of fire, and his head were, uh, let's see, his fire, and, and his, on his head were many crowns, and he had written on his name, and no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God, a capital W. Capital W, Word, means Jesus. Lowercase w in the Bible means the Bible, you know, the Scriptures. Now we see it says, and I saw heaven open. See, heaven will open up. The sky will open at the time of Armageddon, and you'll see Jesus come back. And we read in Joel a while back in Joel chapter 2 about his army. Those of us that are saved will be a part of a member of his army. And we'll fight in Armageddon with Jesus. He's going to go and he's going to take his rightful seat on the judgment seat, excuse me, on the mercy seat, which will be the third temple, which will soon be rebuilt in Jerusalem. I'm not sure when. I'm not sure what the temple will be before or after the rapture. I'm not sure. But there will be a rebuilt third temple very soon, which first, the Antichrist, the devil, will actually sit and claim himself to be God, which he is not. However, in Armageddon, Jesus will take his rightful place on the mercy seat for the thousand-year reign of the millennial kingdom. Now we see, then people are going to believe Jesus Christ and say, well, there he is. There's Jesus from the sky. That's him right there. Well, it's too late. And I'm going to show you uh, why that I'm saying that. If you look at Revelation chapter 14, it's in chapter 14, we start reading in verse 9. It says, And a third angel followed, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive the mark of his right hand or on his, uh, see, receive his um, mark on his forehead or his hand, 
He said, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, mixture in the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, never stopping, forever and ever, and they shall have no, de no rest day or night who worship the beast and its image and whosoever received the mark, on, uh, mark of his name. That's the mark of the beast. We read about the mark of the beast in Revelation 13, 16, about people of all ages in tribulation getting this mark that says in Revelation 13, 16, and he causeth all, who he, he the Antichrist, causeth all small and great, rich and bond free and poor to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead that no man might buy nor sell save he that have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So you got to be careful. If you take the mark of the beast, you're damned to hell. You cannot be saved. Some people say, say that, well, if you cut off your right hand when Jesus, I just don't believe it. Maybe, but I just don't see it. But, but it, the Bible's clearly telling us if you take the mark of the beast on your right hand or in your forehead, you are damned and you cannot be saved. That automatically makes you a goat. When there's a separation of the sheep and the goats, you'll be on the, on the, the goat side, which will be thrown into hell. And the sheep side will be nations that actually help Jews. Is what it is. People saying God's done with the Jews, it's ridiculous. Then why is there a tribulation? God's going to go back to the Jews, and the Jews will be saved, and the Jews will have the millennial kingdom, which will be their promised land of rest. Yes, there will be a time for the Jews to be saved. That tribulation time is for the Jews to come back and to accept Jesus. And they will. They'll see who he is, and they'll realize it was Jesus was the Messiah. And they'll get it. Of course God's going to go back to, Je to the Jews. Amen. That's great time. But you see, well, Jesus will come back, and there's going to be people that don't believe, that are like, oh, there he is. And then they got that mark. Done. And Jesus talks about, uh, in his time, he talks about all these details, which I definitely recommend you read, uh, which I've done videos on in the past, which is about Matthew 24, verses 24, Matthew 25, and things like that. Just great books to understand end times. Because God is, you know, Jesus is talking about the Jews. There is an interesting thing here I want to help write the divide as well about the elect, about how the elect are different definitions of people in different times of the Bible because we have to rightly divide. I'm going to do a separate video about that soon as well, but if you accept the mark and you see Jesus, you're done. There's no way. Oh, I see Jesus, I believe now. If you got the mark, you're a, you're a spot. You're no, it's no more. If you go through tribulation, God forbid, if this is tribulation and you're watching it uh, and I had been raptured, you cannot take this mark that the government gives you, this one world government will give you this mark. You cannot take it. And if you don't take it, they said uh, you can hide out, which would be nearly impossible because they said the third of the earth will be burned up. Or you'd have to lose your head and die for Jesus. That's the only other way you can get to heaven. But taking the mark, you are screwed. But yeah, that's what it's come to, come to be. People that, are, that refuse Christ and they want to see to believe. When it comes to God, faith is what he wants. There's two things that you need to please God. One is faith and one is blood. You need to have faith in the blood. Blood sacrifice has to be shed for your sins or there's no forgiveness. And you also have to have faith. And if you can see something, there's no faith in that. But you have faith in God. You have faith that the Bible is true. You have faith, you believe, you trust. Three words that mean the same thing in the Bible. That's just how it is. But don't be one of those that's going to see Jesus come back in Armageddon. And what, what happens if you don't even live to tribulation? What happens if you don't live to Jesus' return? You die and you don't believe you go straight to hell. In hell, there's no chance of salvation. A lot of people, again, I, I said this in my videos in the past, that people have this misunderstanding that they'll be judged by God and God's going to give them the chance to have like a court hearing to where they can decide, well, the little could be like, oh, you know, you're okay. I, I think you're a good person. That's fine. No, there is none. If you, when you stand before Jesus at the great way of judgment, when you come out of hell, you're just getting your degree of punishment. You're not getting a chance to hear you, hear you out. Be like, Lord, I did this and I did that. God's already done with you. That's it. But if you're saved, you're washing the blood, trusting the blood atonement, the, the gospel of today, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, then you have, your sins have already been judged on the cross. Father threw all his wrath upon Jesus for our sins. And it was paid for on the cross. We'll have a judgment too, thus that are saved. It's called the judgment seat of, uh, yeah, the judgment seat of Christ. And those judgment will be for our service, not our, for our sins. Our sins were paid for on the cross and judged on the cross. But I hope this video helps you, and please don't be one of those ones that will see Jesus when it's too late. And I'll talk to you later.